So let's try this again. Maybe it'll cooperate. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're talking about the parts of a ray diagram. And what the ray diagram allows us to visualize what the light is actually doing. What we're doing here is I'm taking four lasers and I'm firing them currently at the back of a plane mirror. Uh, since it's not the silvered surface, the light rays aren't bouncing off. They're just kind of being absorbed. Now, a little bit's bouncing off, otherwise we wouldn't see the beam, but it's not bouncing off as if it was a reflective surface. These beams here, these are called the incident beams. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so that you can see that the lasers will actually follow the law of reflection. And so, what we've got there now going on is all four incident beams, since they're striking the surface, and the surface is uniform, that means all the normals to the surface are also uniform. So they all point off in the same direction. And as they all point off in the same direction, what occurs is that all of the beams of light, as they come in parallel, they also leave parallel. And since they leave parallel, they never go through a focal point. Okay? And as such, they never have a chance to flip upside down. They never invert. Uh, that is not always true with all mirrors. This is only true of flat mirrors, of only plain mirrors. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you another mirror. And this other mirror is called a concave mirror. It's got a curved surface to it. And the silvered side is on the inside of the curve. And so it does something different. So let me see if I can show you that. So what I have behind it is a concave mirror. And uh, the concave mirror is interesting because in a concave mirror, what it does is the incident beams, as they come in, they strike the surface of the mirror and then they bounce off. And as they bounce off, you'll notice they come through to this point right here. And that point right there is called the focal point. So what happens at the focal point is they all gather, and then they kind of switch places. They trade places. And so what ends up happening is that anything that was on the top is now on the bottom, and anything that was on the bottom is on the top. And it's interesting as far as this you know, setup goes, but it has real implications as far as the mirror. Because with a real mirror, or well, this is a real mirror, but if I have the lights on, what would happen is if the, I put an object beyond this focal point right here, out here, remember, the light, what the light does is it goes in, goes through the focal point, and switches. Switches from top to bottom. And let me show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off the incident rays from the top half of the mirror. And what I want you to know is, notice is what happens to the information, what happens to the incoming incident rays that are on the bottom half of the mirror. And so hopefully what you've seen is the incident rays that are on the bottom half of the mirror are now reflecting up towards the ceiling. And so they're now on the top. And if I do the reverse, the incident rays that were on the bottom, they're turned off. And so now the incident rays on the top, they bounce off. They go through the focal point, and now they're on the bottom. And so that's why whenever you look into a concave mirror, a mirror with a curved surface like this, that all of the images beyond the focal point. So if you're outside the focal point, all of the images are upside down. And you can try this with the with the makeup mirror uh, that you may have or that you know somebody will let you borrow. If you stand far away from the makeup mirror, everything will be upside down. And if you put your face close to the makeup mirror on this side of the focal point, then what happens is now everything's right side up. And I have no idea whether this is going to work, but I have my hand, it's right in front of the mirror. And hopefully you can see that my hand is right side up. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn on some light. And I put a lot of fog in here, so I don't know, maybe we'll be able to see. Maybe we won't. I don't know. All right. So, yeah, you, we probably can. So here I'm in front. This is the focal point. So now I'm in front of the focal point. And hopefully you can see the reflection of my hand, and the, the reflection of my hand is upright. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my hand beyond the focal point, and hopefully you can see that my hand is now inverted. 
And the reason for that is it's crossing through this focal point. So not all, not all light moves in straight lines like this laser light does, but all light behaves exactly the same way. All light follows the law of reflection. Okay, uh, let me see if I can think of anything else I wanted to cover as far as this is concerned. Mm. No, I think that about, oh, I know what it is. Uh, convex lens. There's another kind of mirror. Uh, it's known as a convex mirror. Uh, and I think I put it back already, so let me go get it. There it is. A convex mirror is like a concave mirror, except the convex mirror, instead of having a curved surface where the silver on the inside, the curved surface on the inside is not silvered. It's the outside that's silvered. This would be what you consider like a safety mirror, or what you might see in you know, a store where they're trying to be able to see down all the aisles or whatever. Uh, and this does essentially the same thing that the concave mirror does, but the opposite of it. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and kill the lights, and I'm going to put the concave mirror in front of our incident beams. And so when I do that, hopefully what you can see is that the incident beams on the top, the top two incident beams here, they're striking the surface of the concave mirror. And when they do, this top beam, it moves off to the top. And the bottom beam moves off to the bottom. And so what ends up happening is that the two beams never cross in the front. And since that's the case, then any image that you see inside of one of these safety mirrors always remains upright. It never flips upside down. And that has to do with the shape of the mirror. And I can probably grab a couple of the beams. And you can, you can have fun with this. I mean, you can, you know, take one mirror and face it on another mirror and you get all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, and, uh, and essentially that's how they, they, do, uh, they do laser light shows. They'll have one mirror in a, in a Y plane and another mirror in the X plane and they kind of vibrate back and forth and you get all kinds of cool little light shows and stuff. But that's for another discussion. So this is a, a concave mirror, a convex mirror, and a flat plane mirror and why each mirror has, forms different kinds of images. The flat plane mirror always forms a virtual image. The concave mirror always forms, well, I'm sorry, a convex mirror always forms a virtual image, but the images are upright, but they're usually smaller, and, or they're always smaller. And in a concave mirror, you can get two different kinds of images. You can get an upright virtual image in front of the focal point, and you can get an inverted real image beyond the focal point. So that's definitely all I wanted to cover.